If you participate in the RC or FPV hobby, then it is almost 100% certain that your radio, your hand controller, runs the Edge TX operating system. That's what all these radios that I've got on the table before me have in common. The software that makes them go is Edge TX. And that's important because it means that if you know how to use Edge TX, then you can use any one of these radios and all of your knowledge will transfer over. Your knowledge about how to set up and use and program the radio. But here's the thing. A whole lot of people out there have an Edge TX radio. They've kind of muddled their way through a couple of tutorials to figure out how to do the bare minimum that they need to do in order to actually use the radio on a day-to-day -day basis, but they don't really understand how it works. And that's what we're going to fix in this video series. I'm Joshua Bardwell, and you're going to learn something today. Not just the bare minimum that you need to get by on a day-to-day -day basis, but like, well, I won't say all of it, because there's a lot of it, and surely there will be some parts of it that we don't get to. But we're going to start building up a foundation of knowledge in Edge TX so that when you look at the menus and you look at the screens and you wonder, hey, there's this thing I want to do. How do I do it? You'll be more prepared to get it done. Now, that's not going to happen in one video. This is going to be a video series, and as with all my other tutorial series, there's going to be a playlist. The playlist is linked in the video description below, and I strongly recommend that you interface with this video series through that playlist. You can bookmark it, you do whatever you need to do, but if you just sort of wait for the YouTube algorithm to surface the next video in the playlist, that's not going to be the best way to do it. Start with the playlist, start with video number one, which is this video, and work your way through there as you go. So. What are we going to get into in this video? Actually, hang on. Before we get into anything, I got to acknowledge there's a whole bunch of different form factors for Edge TX radios, and that's both a blessing and a curse. It's a blessing because, as I said earlier, it means that once you learn how to work with Edge TX, it kind of doesn't matter whether you're using a radio with a little microscopic screen like this or a radio with a great big color screen like this. And it's sort of guts is the same. It just the, the, the interface looks a little different. Sometimes it's like a text based interface. Sometimes it's a more graphical interface. And that's a good thing. But it's a bad thing from the perspective of making tutorials because it means that if I demonstrate something for you on one radio, it's not going to look exactly the same on the other radio. I want to reassure you that whatever radio you, you've got, I'm going to do my best to make sure you can follow along with these tutorials. And we'll, you'll see exactly how I approach that as we go into it. But I don't want you to think that just because you don't have one of the exact radios that I'm working with here on the bench, that you can't participate in these tutorials. You absolutely can. The other thing I want you to know is that all of the information I'm going to be teaching you here in these videos is also available in print form. EdgeTX actually has a user manual. It's on the EdgeTX website, and I'm going to link it down in the video description below low. And I point that out to you because some people prefer to just have somebody like me explain stuff to you. And then sometimes you just want to go look it up and find the freaking answer without having to scroll through a 20 minute long video. And that information, however you want to consume the information, I just want you to get the information that you need. But I'm going to be, obviously, I'm a video presenter. And so that's how I'm going to be presenting it to you. Finally, I want you to know that my goal is going to be to present this information to you in a usable and practical way, focused on like things you want to do with the radio and not so much in like an encyclopedic way where we'll go, here is a button. Here's what the button does. And you're like, well, when would I want to do that? And it's just up to you to figure it out. That's not always going to be possible. Sometimes we'll just need to go through and encyclopedically list the options so that you know what they are. But we're going to try to focus it on tasks and actual practical usage as much as possible. So let's start by powering on the radio and doing some basic setup of our radio. And we'll Switch warning. When we power up the radio, we may get a switch warning, which is telling us that the switches on the radio are not in the predetermined positions. You can have the radio give you this warning so that when you power up the radio, your aircraft is in the state that you expect it to be in. This is especially important when the switches have functions on things like servos, like landing gears and so forth, where if they were to suddenly retract while the plane was on the ground, it would be really bad. It also matters for multi-rotors for things like the arm switch. You always want to power up with the arm switch in the disarmed position or if you have a pre-arm switch, you want to make sure the pre-arm switch is locking out the ability to arm. And you can actually configure the radio, and we'll see how to do this a little later in the series. You can configure the radio with what switch positions you want everything to be in so that when it first powers up, it, it gives you the warning. Here on the front screen of the radio, we have some basic information. And this is one of the black and white screen radios. We'll take a look at the color screen in just a second. And I'll actually put chapter markers on these videos so that if you like don't have a color screen radio and don't really care about them, 
you'll be able to skip ahead to the chapters that pertain to what you've got. I would encourage you to watch the whole video if possible, because it's possible that I'll drop some little nugget of information in the color screen section. And if you don't watch it, you might miss that, but it's your time and your attention. Of course, you can do whatever you want with it. Here on the main screen, we can see the name of the model that we've got loaded. We'll talk about models and naming them and why you have different models later in the video. We can see the main battery voltage and that is configurable how that scale if you got a different kind of battery with a different maximum minimum voltage it is scaled for a lithium polymer maybe a lithium ion battery we could take a look later if we want to and we can see the position of the trim switches these indicators here show the position of the trims and if i move the trims you can see that this trim indicator is going up and if i move it down it'll come back down again Multi-rotor pilots probably aren't going to mess with the trim switches very much, but they're a big deal for fixed-wing pilots, and fixed-wing pilots would very much want to know where those trims are at. If I press the page keys, here we've got a page forward and a page back key, I can page through several different pages here on the main screen. One of them is going to show me basically that same information, but with another indicator that gives me my stick position, if I move the stick up and down, left and right, as well as the position of these knobs. If I turn these knobs, we can see the knob indicators going up and down, and Actually, I've got this radio program so that changes my screen brightness and my volume. That's something I do on my radios. I'll leave that alone for the time being so my screen isn't constantly getting bright, brighter and dimmer. If you're interested in knowing how to do that, I'll put a link to my tutorial in the video description below, and you can kind of skip ahead <laughs> It's in the series and set your radio up that same way. We can also see here the indicator of the switch positions, and as I move the switches, we can see these arrows go middle, down, and up to indicate which position the individual switches are in. Some of the switches will just go up and down, and some of the switches are three position and will go middle, down, and up, depending on the type of switch that it is. We can also see here a clock, and the radio does have a real-time clock battery. It will maintain time if you set the time. However, the time will drift and is usually not accurate, and there are ways that you can like have the GPS on your drone set the clock on the on the controller and keep your cl controller clock up to date. But frankly, I don't even really worry about it very much. And my clock is always wrong. And well, that's just where I'm at right now. If I continue to page through these screens, here is a readout of the individual channels that the radio has. And if you're very, very new to FPV and RC, then you may not know what the individual channels are. And we'll talk about that more in a, a future video. But suffice it to say that your, your controller sends to your receiver and your flight controller individual channel values. And those channels can go from, let's say from 0% to 100%. And so for example, if we have here a gimbal and the gimbal goes from all the way down, to all the way up. We could think of that as being zero to a hundred. And we can see that as I move it, the channel goes from all the way down to all the way up. And that's basically how the flight controller or the airplane knows what your switches and sticks are doing. It's just sending these channel values. That's basically all of the information that is sent from the controller is individual channel values. You see, I move the stick left and right, a different channel moves. I move the right stick down and up, a different channel moves and so on. If I page again, we have basically the same readout, but this time numerical. So here we have the channel values, but instead of a graphic, we've got a number going from plus 100 to minus 100. I said earlier that it was from zero to 100%, but the bones of RC flight go all the way back to servos, where we would have airplanes or cars with a servo that could move things like, could move a control surface up or down or move the steering rack left or right. And a servo has a control arm and that control arm can be all the way one way or all the way the other way. Typically, they'll have maybe 180 degrees of movement. And so it, we could have the servo be in the middle position, which is considered basically zero. We can have it be all the way one way, which is plus 100%, or we could have it be all the way the other way, which is minus 100%. So sometimes we think about channels as going from basically zero to 100%, or sometimes we think about channels as going from zero to plus 100 or zero to minus 100, depending on whether, well, just depending on how we're deciding to think about them in that exact moment. And the numerical readout is very nice though, because it gives you like a clear indication of the exact channel position. I see that when the throttle is all the way down, this channel is at minus 100. Well, if the throttle was all the way down and the channel was at like minus 80, then I would know that the stick wasn't going all the way to the bottom of its travel or my gimbal was out of calibration. I can see right here that even though this stick is centered, the channel is actually at 
2 instead of at 0. It should be at 0 when it's centered. And that means, well, one or two degrees of, of miscalibration isn't really a big deal and isn't worth fixing, but technically this stick is slightly out of calibration. Here, we've got this one. It is at 5 when it should be at 0. Maybe I would want to recalibrate this gimbal and get that back into, get it to 0, which is where it should be. If I continue to page to the next page, we've got here the channels monitor. Again, very similar information, this time showing more channels, showing eight channels at once in a list and showing both graphical and numerical at the same time. And I can actually scroll the jog wheel here to see that the radio supports up to 32 channels uh, and I can see the value of all 32 of those channels. You should be aware that although the radio supports up to 32 channels internally, the actual control system, the radio system used by the radio will oftentimes not support that many channels. In fact, basically always. Uh, for example, this radio has Express LRS as its control system, its radio system, and Express LRS supports a maximum of 16 channels, although most of the time it will only support up to 12 channels. TBS Crossfire supports 12 channels out of the box, but you can tick an option to enable 16 channels. There are a few of them out there that support only eight channels. Most of them support between eight and 16, with 16 being the most common number. If we page again, we come back to the start and we've gone all the way around. Let's take a look at what that looks like on a big color screen radio next. And for that, we're gonna pull out the Jumper T15, which is a pretty cool radio in that it's not quite as big and bulky as the TX16S that I've got here, but it still has the big color touchscreen. That's pretty slick. Uh, and what I want you to see is that the information we've got on the color touchscreen radios is very similar, but maybe a little bit more visually pleasing than the information on the black and white screen radios. But you're not really missing well, you are missing some functionality if you don't have a color touch screen, but we're not quite there yet. So on this radio, uh, here we are on the main screen and you can see that we've got the trim indicators just like before. Oh, it is a touch screen. So if I touch the screen, it's gonna, it's gonna bring up a menu. Here's our page key right here and you can see that it there's no separate page forward and page back key on the jumper radios. And that's true not just for the T15 with its color touchscreen, but also like, for example, this radio, the Jumper T Pro. The jumper radios seem to have a single page key pretty consistently. They're not the only ones who do this. Radio Master, by contrast, seems to always have a separate page forward and page back. But don't worry, you're not missing out. If I just uh, real quick hit menu here, and then hit the page key. You can see I can page forward by hitting the page key one way. And if I long press, I will page back. It's a little bit awkward to know when you've long pressed versus when you're short pressing. And frankly, a lot of people would say that with a touch screen, you should just tap and you'll be good to go. The touch screen is not as responsive as you might hope it would be. Um, but don't, don't let the fact that you don't have a page back key make you feel like you're missing out. Now here on the main screen of the T15 and other color touchscreen radios, where's all that information? Where's the stick positions and all that stuff that we were seeing? It's not there. This screen is completely blank. And if I hit page, nothing happens. And the reason for that is that the color touchscreen radios are fully configurable. These main screens can be set up in extremely complex ways and you put whatever information you want in the forefront. If I turn on my TX16X, you can see this is my default layout for my TX16S, uh, and I just haven't set that up on my T15 yet. You can see that I've got a channel readout here, right? I've got some stats here, like my receiver battery, this is my quadcopter's battery, my transmit power, uh, the model name is Express LRS, my radio's battery, a graphical indication of my radio, my RSSI readout. You could put a model, a picture of the model here. You can put all kinds of information here. And in fact, I've actually set up multiple pages here. If I press the page key one more time, there's, well, <laughs> There's nothing there, but I was starting to set up a second screen with my number of GPS sats and other GPS related information. The beauty of the color touch screens and sort of blessing and a curse situation here is that they are fully configurable, but they do come from the factory just with a blank, hello, go back, just with a blank nothing screen and it's up to you to set them up. It's a little early for us to teach how to do that right now. And in fact, I already did a video where I showed how to set them up. And if you're interested in doing that right now, I'll link that video down in the video description. It's called Widget Setup. And you can check that out if you wanna kind of jump ahead. Let's take a look at one more radio before we move on. And this is the Jumper T Pro. And you, I want you to see that even though it has a little tiny screen, much smaller than the Radio Master Boxer, if I press the page key, you can see that the exact same screens are here that we saw in the Boxer. As I page through, 
we can see literally the exact same screen. So even though it looks like these radios have a whole bunch of different form factors, there's actually a lot more similarity here. There's basically the black and white screen radios and the color touchscreen radios, and that's it in terms of the menu interface. You know, I always struggle with how much content to put in each one of these videos. On the one hand, putting a ton of content into one video gives you sort of more value all in one place. But on the other hand, breaking the content out into separate videos makes it easier for people to find it and easier to consume it in bite-sized chunks. So I think that's gonna do it for this video, but don't worry, the series is not done. There's a link in the video description below, as well as I'm gonna put a card on screen to the entire playlist where you can see the whole tutorial and I will see you in the next one, hopefully immediately, because hopefully you're hungry for a lot more information. See you there.